is, um, here we are outside the Royal Courts of Justice. My question is, um, judges, let's say take judges and barristers to start with. Um, in my experience of them, it could be that on average they're about uh, they're above average intellectual intelligence, one could argue. What about their emotional, physical, spiritual and psychological development? Would you say that they are uh, above average, um, average, below the average, um, and is that a requirement for being in the law? I think they're below average, and the reason I say they're below average, I think they live in a bubble of self-perpetuated wealth, and they make flash decisions on three-minute hearings, and people right. go in there like a conveyor belt, right. and I think they live in their own little world, to be quite honest, and they play God in this country, that's why so many businesses keep their businesses abroad rather than this country. At the moment. Right. Great, thank you. Lawyers, barristers and judges, in particular barristers and judges, yeah, some people would probably find it easy to agree that they are above average intellectual intelligence. You know, their, their intellect is usually above average and sound. What about um, their emotional, spiritual, physical and psychological development? Would you say that, let's take judges and barristers, are above average, average or below average in all these areas of life? And is it important? I haven't got a clue. I can't speak for anybody else. But obviously we're dealing with ordinary people day in, day out. Yeah. And very often cases are a result of people's uh, emotional actions. And so we become very experienced, I think, in human emotions. Right. And uh, gain an understanding of them. So do you think, I'm still talking about in their own personal development. Yes. Would you say that it's important that a person, if, it goes, if there are any tests, to check that a person is psychologically not just sound but also uh, quite self-aware yeah. uh, is there a test yeah. that they are um, you know they're emotionally uh, well um, and developed is there a test to make sure they're spiritually developed or are these things not important well, in the law? I think they're important but we're, we're on trial every day people can come and watch us work and anybody who was um, behaving in a, an abnormal way emotionally would be spotted and they wouldn't get any more briefs Right. Oh, I see what you mean. You mean like a, a barrister? We're on trial every day. We're being watched and, and what we do is being watched. It's all yeah. being recorded word for word. Um, same with judges. We sit in open court. Yeah. So any, uh, if they were out of um, kilter with their emotions or their um, psychological development, then it would be noticed and right. Uh, right. dealt with. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Okay, so here we are at the Southwark Court, Crown Court. And um, we're here with somebody who's uh, uh, in the court at the moment. So the question is, is the system rigged? Is. In your opinion? Yeah, what, why? Why do you say that? What makes you say well, that? Well, uh, basically, if you, f if you come with £20,000, for example, as a caution, then you will get the bill. If you've got no money, or the money is not enough, let's say two, three thousand pounds you will not get no bill. So basically, it's a game do with money. Right. Right, so you're not going to get bail unless you've got so enough So basically, money. if you say the justice, justice, but to be honest, the way I see it, it's just a game of money. Right. But they don't know that, right? They don't know they that. Think... They, well, they pretend not to know that. Right. right. It's a different... Right. Okay, so you think they might know. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so tell me why you're here in court. Well, I'm here in court because my brother was uh, accused of a robbery. Participate in a robbery. When was that? That was on uh, last Saturday. Yeah. Then basically there was no evidence, funds, no, disc no official description, and it was one one only knife found, and with no fingerprints of my brother on it. And uh, basically there were five people that did the robbery. Only three people was arrested, of which one of those was my brother was arrested about half a mile from the um, crime scene and basically to me there's not enough evidence to keep someone in jail for well, now it's two weeks and we'll be there until the end of October and then another two three months for the trial date so it's completely wrong I mean and what about if it bail? Was no DNA how much bail did they ask for they asked for well the lawyer when I went to the interview he said bring as much money as possible as this game is a game of money and the judge, he even, he even said the judges, they know each other. So after they go lunch together, this and that. So basically, 
it's like, I know the judge, you let me win this case, yeah, I'll let you win the next case. For example, if I go there with 100,000 pounds, definitely my brother will be out, you know, but we only offer 4,000, unfortunately, we're not rich. And that's it, Bell was refused. What did they ask for? How much did they ask for? Well, they, they never asked for any particular figure, but the lawyer said, our lawyer said, before we go there, please get as much as money as you can. Right. Yeah. And so if he, he, there's no evidence. There's no DNA. He's in jail. No fingerprints. And if he gets stuck in jail for three months and get, found not guilty or for five months. Not, exactly. We'll be there, definitely we'll be there till the 22nd of October. There's no DNA. There's no fingerprints on anything, any items, no items found on him. Was right. arrested half a mile away from the crime wow. scene. And basically, to me, and to the lawyer too, there's not enough evidence to keep in there. But unfortunately, the bell was not released. Okay. Thank you. All right.